in this video I'll be revealing the secret to problem solving and how the likes of Albert Einstein, Elon Musk, Thomas Edison, Henry Ford operated at such a high level, how they always had solutions to problems and adversities that they were faced with. And this is a secret that's not widely known or shared and requires a lot of sweat and tears to be quite frank before you actually unlock the secret or identify the secret and I've dedicated a lot of years to finding how to solve problems and trying to understand how such great minds are able to solve problems at ease and always come up victorious always come up on top and I did a lot of research did a lot of reading and over the years as a business analyst working in the corporate space, space, I always found myself tackling problems, clients' problems, my problems, and always struggling to come up with a solution, come, struggling to come up with a creative solution as well. And as a business owner, startup founder, there was a lot of problems that you faced because the startup life is simply unprecedented. And I always knew that there was a secret. I always knew that being able to solve problems is a skill. And I made a vow with myself that I was going to unlock this secret that I'd identify and, and learn the skill to solve problems. And it was completely wrong in terms of what I thought the solution would be or what I thought the skill would be. And it wasn't nothing external. And I then stumbled upon this secret rates and their minds and the secret is pretty much just a set of three simple principles and when you know these principles and these frameworks you're now able to solve any problem you face in your business and in your life as an entrepreneur and the first principle or the first secret it's quite profound because it was the power, or should I say, it is the power to reframing your mind towards problems. What does this mean? This simply means shifting your mind towards how you see problems you face. So now seeing, or first of all, asking yourself and being aware to check in yourself and say, how do I actually think about problems? Do I hate problems? Do I love facing problems? And being able to reframe your mind towards problems and the power of reframing is that you now see problems as an opportunity. You now see problems as a gift and you now see problems as an opportunity for you to, instead of blame, judge, run away, but you're running towards problem now because there's growth. You see a problem as an opportunity for you to learn something. And now what you realize is that your self-talk, your ideas towards problems change. They change from being, oh, I'm special. There's something wrong with me. I always face problems. Why always me? To now, oh, I'm special. Yes, I'm special. Yes, I'm special because of what I did when faced with this problem. Yes, I'm special because of what I've created after being faced with X and Z, whether it's in life or it's in business. And this secret, this principle is so profound because it's so simple. It's a simple mindset shift towards what you think about problems or problems being negative, problems being a challenge, a, 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 a hindrance, or blockage to problems being positive, problems being an opportunity. I love problems. I now know that growth, my wins are behind those problems when I've actually gone through it and actually created a solution for this problem. So it's quite cool, it's quite interesting, it's very simple and it's very exciting. And it takes us swiftly into the second secret, which is your state of mind. Yes, 
your mental state. And what I mean by your state of mind is simply the awareness of your current mindset when you're faced with a problem. So what I mean by this is you're faced with a problem and you're in the midst of trying to solve this problem. But what's your current state of mind? There is a very good, or oh, for instance, there is a very interesting chart called the consciousness frequency. And what this chart shows us is that as human beings, we're spiritual beings and we operate on a conscious level at different states of frequencies. You have at the higher level, the highest, the top of the chart, we have enlightenment. Enlightenment is the highest conscious frequency you can be operating in as a human being. And at, at the lower level of the chart, you've got shame, guilt, anger, hatred, you name it, all the negative emotions. And when it comes to problem solving, why this is so important is that you cannot find the answers to the problems you face when you're operating at the lower end of the consciousness frequency chart. You will not, not even you cannot, you will not find the right answers, solutions to any problems you face when you're operating at a conscious level of enlightenment, enti entitlement, when you're operating at a conscious level of anger, hatred, desire. And so what this secret and this principle is telling us is that once you've identified and you're aware of what your current state of mind is when faced with a problem, you want to always make sure you can switch to the higher end of that frequency chart, which is the likes of being gratitude, being, being grateful. And this is the key thing that I discovered when it comes to the skill of problem solving. And this is, and I discovered this because I asked myself the question, this same question I'm asking you, when faced with a problem, what's your current state of mind? And for me, it was always, I'm entitled to the answer. Or it was always, oh, I hate that, that I'm being faced with problems. And funny enough, I was running away from the majority of my problems because I just didn't want to face problems. And it's because I hadn't reframed my thoughts towards problems. And the secret is to be grateful when faced with a problem because it's an opportunity. And because when you're in a state of gratitude, you then are able to tap into the deeper intelligence or you're, you're then able to tap into intelligence deeper than thought. What do I mean by that? Is that there are solutions at the thought level for everyone when trying to solve a problem. So these are logical solutions. These are equations or these are a logical approach to a particular problem you're saving. And these are all at the thought level. These are at the, the, the mind level. You know, your thoughts, your conscious thoughts, actual tangible things, for instance, or practical things or things that are factual that you know. But then there's an intelligence that's deeper than that, deeper than the thought level. And being able to tap into that intelligence, being able to tap into those solutions, you have to be at a state of gratitude. And this takes us to the third secret, which is the most exciting secret. And this is something called the faculty of creative imagination. And I've got my notes here and I'm going to quickly explain what this is and where it really comes from. So the faculty of creative imagination is something that Naponyo Hill talks about in his book, Think and Grow Rich. And first, when I read this book, I've read this book over 10 times, probably my top three books out there that I recommend to all the clients, all the clients that I work with and all my good entrepreneurial friends and just people in general that are not in the entrepreneurial space because this book just gives you the blueprint to understanding the principles of the universe and the principles of, of operating life at the highest level. And what 
Napoleon Hill is simply saying here when he talks about the faculty of creative imagination is simply that humans can communicate directly with infinite intelligence. And when they tap into the state, they directly, or when they tap into the state, what Napoleon Hill talks about when he talks about the faculty of creative imagination in this book, Think and Grow Rich, is simply that humans can communicate directly with infinite intelligence. And tapping into this state is directly colorated, colorated, and tapping into the state is directly linked to the development of new ideas and inspiration. I'll say that again. Humans can communicate directly with infinite intelligence. And when they tap into the state, it's directly linked to new ideas and inspiration. So the ability to be able to tap into infinite intelligence and ideas for inspiration is in sync with your state of mind. And it's also under understanding that all your answers are within you. So everything is linked because once you've reframed your mind towards problems, you then start seeing problems in a positive light. And then you're making sure that you're shifting to a gratitude frequency whenever you're trying to solve a problem. It then links directly to, or it then positions you to be able to tap into creative imagination, which is simply an infinite power or an infinite intelligence that's already within us because now we understand that one, we are faced with this problem for a reason. Two, when we solve this problem, we're going to, or two, this problem is a gift and we're special because of what we've done when we've solved this problem. And this problem is going to have a ripple effect to mankind, to your customers, to people around you. And now you then understand that the reason you're faced with this problem is because you already know or you already have the solution with, within you. So you are faced with this problem because you're chosen to solve this problem. So it's not a blame and judgment game, but more of a, of a gratitude game where it's like, wow, I'm actually faced with this problem because I've actually been picked to create something that others are going to use or that are going to ease others' pain from a business standpoint. And this is the secret that the likes of Albert Einstein uses and this is what they tap into and other artists, other creative figures all know and operate at this state of mind. And there's a quote from Albert Einstein when he was asked a question about how he comes up with solutions to problems he's faced. And I'll just quickly read that for you. He said, I'm enough of an artist to draw freely upon my imagination. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. So he's simply saying that whenever he's faced with a problem, he's not at the surface level, which is the thought level, which is knowledge, logic, and so on. He taps into a deeper level, which is imagination, because Imagination is more important than knowledge and because knowledge is limited and Im image encircles the world. And it's so powerful because he's basically saying, hey, yes, I can shop in this market, which is the basic market, which is the thought market. But I have known that I can tap into the creative imagination space and tap into this, this, this secret that would allow me to come up with creative ideas. So to conclude, I want to give you guys some practical steps to implement this secret. And I've got five steps that I've used, that I've come up with, they're simple steps. And these are frameworks that I operate in whenever faced with a problem. And the first one is reframing problems 
embracing problems and being grateful towards problems. So rather than running away from problems, running towards problems. The second step, the second framework is always desire a specific outcome or solution when faced with a problem. So practically, you've got a problem. When tackling this problem, you must have a specific outcome. You must desire a specific outcome or solution. So you must want something specific. So you have to really break down the problem and try and, and come up with an idea of a specific solution that you'd want as an outcome to the problem. I hope that makes sense. The third framework is to eliminate fear, eliminate doubt and have felt faith. The third framework is to have faith whenever faced with a problem. What do I mean by having faith? I simply mean by operating in a state of fearlessness. So eliminate fear and eliminate doubt. Being in a state of fear and doubt does not or hinders you from tapping into the creative imagination faculty. You want to be operating at a, at a state of faith. You want to believe that you can solve this problem. You want to believe that you can identify the solution to this problem that you're faced with. And the fourth framework is stillness. This is quite simple. And what I mean by stillness is that the key to creativity and solutions lies with stillness. You see a lot of mindfulness practice, practitioners tend to advise meditation, tend to advise eliminating noise, tend to advise clearing a room whenever you're faced with a problem just to stay still and stay calm because it's hard for you to hear or think or tap into this creative imagination when there's a lot running in your mind. There's a lot happening around you. So stillness simply means from a practical sense, lock yourself in the room, go for a walk early in the morning, stay calm, meditate, think about this problem you're solving and utilizing the first three principles I've talked about, have faith, have a desired outcome and reframing your idea towards problem, you're able to then easily tap into the creative imagination state and come up with solutions for problems you're facing. The fifth framework is to be present to being in the now and not being stuck on the future and not being stuck on the past. So always bringing everything back down to you in this present moment and what you're trying to achieve, your desired outcome and always just being now and being grateful. And so these are the secrets. I hope you found this video useful. This was one of the most exciting videos I've, I've, I've done because I know how vital this skill is and I know how much of a challenge it's been for me to uncover this skill and, and actually implement it and actually see wins. And this is something I take my clients through. And this is something that we, we work on and we, in my consultancy business search group, we just don't work on the outer things. We also work on the inner things to be able to actually operate at a consistent level. And this is something I take them through. So I hope you find this useful. I hope this was useful to you. And the practical steps are something you can actually take on now and start implementing. If you're a new subscriber or if you're a new viewer, please make sure you subscribe to my video. I'm really trying to be consistent with the daily uploads. So definitely your subscription would help. If you've already subscribed, make sure you hit that bell button so you're notified whenever there's a new video. Drop me a like and also leave me a comment on what you thought about this video and I'll catch you in the next one.